Okay, g'day all and welcome to the final part of our little mini-series on uh, the Radix sort versus comparison sorts. So in this final part we're going to have a look at some, uh, some code. Yeah, some real code for a Radix sort and a comparison sort. The comparison sort that I've selected just here is quicksort. The code for both the Radix sort and the quicksort that we're about to see is uh, actually based on code from Geeks for Geeks. And I'll leave a link up above and another one down below so that you can have a bit of a look at that if you want. So we're just going to erase these little sorts and see uh, the kinds of speeds that they can get and then have a bit of a comparison so that we can see uh, as the lists of items increase uh, how the performance of these sorts uh, compares. Just a little bit about the code from the start. What have we got? We've got a whole bunch of things. We've got include vector. We don't need that. std lib. We don't need that. We don't need that. I was comparing the uh, std sort as well, the standard uh, C++ sort. Uh, it was uh, pretty much the same as the quick sort. Yeah, maybe marginally faster. Uh, I think I've read that it uses a, a hybrid sort uh, based on uh, merge sort, I believe, for the std sort. A little bit about the data that we're going to be sorting. So we're sorting unsigned integers here, and I generate this with my favorite uh, random number generator, George Masaglia's uh, XOR shift generator. Yeah, so unsigned integers. This is pretty much tailor-made for the Radix sort. Random number generators are up there at the top. And then down here in the actual code, we just generate a list of some number of elements, so 10 initially. Uh, we run through and sort them 10 times with uh, 10 different random lists. Then we just check if the list is actually sorted. That's just debugging. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that the code was actually working, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, so if we have a look over here at the quick sort code, uh, so once again, this is based on code from Geeks for Geeks. We're not gonna be looking at the quick sort in detail, but it pretty much works. Um, you pick a pivot in the middle of your data, and then you put everything less than your pivot to the left, and everything greater than your pivot to the right, and then you know at that point that the pivot is in its correct position. And then you do the same thing with the right-hand data. You just pick a pivot in the middle, then you put everything less to the left and everything greater to the right. Uh, it's a divide and conquer algorithm. Yeah, but we won't be talking about the details of quicksort. What I will say about it is that uh, it's really, really fast. Uh, really fast. Uh, it's a great little sort, really. I mean, there's a reason why they call it quicksort. Uh, it's a good sort. Yeah, but that's pretty much what the code is doing. So it just picks a pivot in the in the middle. There's actually a whole bunch of different strategies to picking pivots, and uh, quick sort will actually perform uh, at a speed of uh, big O n squared in the worst case. Yeah, so you do have to be a little bit careful with your pivot. Uh, I think generally speaking, if you pick a pivot in the middle of your data, uh, it tends to run fairly well. Or if you pick a random pivot, uh, that runs fairly well as uh, as well. Uh, but here's the main, uh, the main part of the quick sort. Yeah, so you actually end up with um, two little pointers over the uh, low end or the left hand side and the top end of your array. Then you just step them closer to each other, uh, step them closer to the pivot, kind of uh, switching items wherever they're um, not on the right side of the pivot. So the inner loop of a quick sort is really quite cool. It's uh, really, really simple. And the other cool thing about the quick sort is that it's actually in place. Yeah, so you don't really allocate any extra data. We've got a couple of um, integers here, these index pointers, i and j, but I mean, there's, there's almost no data allocated at all. Um, so a quick sort uh, will perform, you know, pretty well, really. It's a fast sort. Uh, I think uh, maybe shell sort and merge sort can uh, beat a quick sort sometimes. Uh, but, I mean, if you want to implement just a fast, um, Comparison sort, quick sort is often the way to go. Okay, but that is the code to our quick sort. So if we have a bit of a look at the radix sort, it actually changed a fair bit in this. Uh, so I changed the radix to 256 and I removed a function call. Uh, I also used the pointer swapping technique rather than copying the output and input arrays to each other, you can just swap pointers. If we step through it a bit, uh, sort of one step at a time, uh, unsigned int output, so this is where we make our output array just there. Uh, this is where we make our little counts array. Yeah, so our radix for this particular code just here is 256. And the reason that I did that was um, in order to get the digits, uh, what we actually do is divide and take the remainder. We do the modulus operator, in other words. And uh, CPUs or computers don't really like working with base 10 uh, because it's difficult or it's slow for them to divide by 10 um, or it's slower. 
if you take the modulus after division of 256, what you're actually doing is just anding or Boolean anding with 255. So that's really, really fast. And that's why I chose the radix of 256. I also tried um, a radix of base 16, and I found that that was uh, fast and maybe half the speed. Uh, but I found that uh, the radix of uh, 16 bits, what's that, 65536 as your radix, 65,000 or 64K, uh, is actually slower. Yeah, so there is a sweet spot where you've got to set your radix to, or your uh, radix sort won't work out that fast. Anyway, we've got um, our little counts just here, then we've got unsigned int original array equals A double R. So I said before that I'm actually using a pointer swapping trick so that I don't have to actually copy the output to the input array, I just swap pointers. Uh, but if you do that, then you want to know if you've uh, swapped an even or an odd number of times. You want to be sure that you know which ARR was the original. Yeah. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we delete the correct output. Uh, anyway, so this is how it works just here. So for, for base 256, if you're sorting any 32-bit uh, unsigned integer arrays, then you need four iterations. And we start out by zeroing the counts just for i equals zero to 256, uh, zero the, the counts. And the next thing that we've got to do is store the occurrences of each digit in the counts. And it's this rather strange looking um, for loop just here. And then we've got to do the uh, prefix sum. And that's this next loop just down here. So once again, the prefix sum is just, um, you just move from left to right or from the lowest index to the highest index in your count and you just maintain a sum as you go. It's pretty simple. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous videos, have a bit of a, this is the third video. This is a wrap up of a three video series. This is a mini series, the series is so mini. All right, build the output array is the next step. So these uh, two steps, building the prefix sum and then using that to rebuild the output array, uh, that was kind of the fiddly part of the radix sort when we're using a counting sort, uh, but this is how you do it just here. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not easy code to read. Uh, and the final bit is that we've got to uh, copy the output array to the input array so that we can uh, proceed to the next iteration. Now, as I said before, I'm just swapping pointers just here like this. Yeah, but you do want to be careful. If you do swap pointers, uh, you have to be careful at the end that you don't accidentally delete the uh, uh, input array. I mean, <laughs> Um, some function is probably relying on that their data staying safe. You just delete it and then return the output array. They might be confused. Um, so that's this last little part down here. If original array equals output, in other words, if we've, if we've done an odd number of iterations, then we've got to perform one final swap before we delete the output and the count and we return with our sorted data. But that, my friends, is a base 256 uh, radix sort. Let's have a little bit of a look at some time here. Okay, so here we go. This is quick sort, sorting 10 elements. Let's see how many milliseconds it takes. Wouldn't you know it? It takes zero milliseconds. <laughs> yeah, so this is an i7 just here. It's not going to have any trouble sorting 10 elements with quick sort. Let's see if radix sort does any better. Be um, unlikely. Have to go back in time. There you go. Radix sort also takes zero milliseconds to sort 10 elements. Surprise, surprise. Let's move up to 100 elements. Let's see how Radix sort performs. Zero milliseconds once again for Radix sort. Let's go over to quick sort. That 100 elements takes zero milliseconds for quick sort. Let's see 1000 elements. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Quicksort took one millisecond just then. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. 1,000 elements. This is the sorted list down here. It couldn't quite figure out. So 31, 6 come before the, I don't really, and then it took one millisecond. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's go to Radix sort and see if it can do uh, 1,000 in zero milliseconds. Ooh, look at that. Zero milliseconds across the board for Radix sort so far. So far, they're both taking pretty much no time at all to sort lists of 1,000 unsigned integers. Let's move up to 10,000 unsigned integers. Ah, there you go. Okay, so it's a little bit hit and miss, but about half of the time, quick sort is taking one millisecond to sort these lists of 10,000 elements. Let's have a look at radix sort. 
So this is about the uh, point where the radix sort starts to beat the quick sort uh, in terms of speed. Uh, okay, so you can see just there that radix sort is also starting to take some recorded time. So it took one uh, millisecond there on one of those iterations. Now, something else I think we should point out, actually I might point it out in the next one. Uh, okay, so that's 10,000 elements. Uh, quick sort and radix sort are almost even, though quick sort is taking a little bit longer. All right, let's have a bit of a look at this. So I'll just run this first of all, and we'll see this is 100,000 elements quick sort sorting. Uh, okay, so quick sorts took, what's it, about maybe six milliseconds at the lowest, six or seven milliseconds. Uh, but something I do want to point out about quick sort is if you look over here, um, Visual Studio is actually providing us also with the amount of RAM that the algorithm is taking. So it says here that this quick sort algorithm uh, program, this is a whole program, uh, is taking 980 kilobytes. Yeah, so if we just stop that, now just delete that and we run our radix sort. This is radix sort, sorting 100,000 uh, unsigned integers. Six or seven is the time to beat. And would you look at that? It's taking one or zero uh, milliseconds uh, for this radix sort to sort 100,000 unsigned integers. But uh, if you remember, the quick sort was taking a little bit less than one megabyte when we just looked at the RAM. The radix sort is taking about two megabytes. Um, so you see that, um, yeah, you don't get anything for free. Uh, radix sort might be faster than quick sort for these large lists, but it also takes more memory. It's always a bit of a trade off there. Okay, so that is 100,000 elements. We just moved up to 1 million elements now. Let's see how quick sort performs. Uh, there we go. So it's starting to take a noticeable amount of time. I think 71 milliseconds is the minimum there. Uh, 71 milliseconds to sort a list of 1 million unsigned integers is honestly, that's pretty quick. Really, that's pretty quick. Uh, the quick sort is, it's, it's a heck of an algorithm, really. It's a fantastic algorithm. Uh, but, uh, radix sort for 1 million elements. Would you look at that? Um, it's like seven times faster or something like that. Um, just much, much faster. Yeah, so even at 1 million elements, the radix sort is much, much faster. And we can actually move up to say a billion elements and sort it without too much trouble using the radix sort. I think this takes something like 12 or 13 seconds. Um, the RAM usage over there is eight gigabytes. So, I mean, this is not mucking around. <laughs> uh, there you go. 12 seconds to sort 1 billion elements on a little laptop. Uh, the radix sort is fast. I tell you what, it it flies. It really flies. Um, there you go. It's only just a hair over 10 seconds. Uh, okay, but we stop that for a second. Um, if we have a bit of a look over here, I've actually got a little chart where we've um, sorted these different numbers of elements without all of the screen recorder and things like that going so that we can compare these things. So for 1000 elements, both of the sorts performed at about zero milliseconds. Then for 10,000 elements, the quick sort performed at maybe one millisecond. Uh, 100,000 elements, the radix sort performed at one millisecond. The quick sort at about six times that, took about six milliseconds, etc., etc., etc. So as you look down this chart just here, what you can see is that the radix sort uh, more or less adds, I guess, 10 times each time. So it's linear to the number of elements. Yeah, so for 100 million elements, the radix sort took something like uh, 1.05 seconds. And if we multiply the number of elements by 10, then the speed that the radix sort functions is something like 10 times um, what it did. So it's about 10.6 seconds. Um, that's why they call it linear. Yeah, that's why they call it linear. Whereas the quick sort um, really starts to take a very, very long time. By the time we've got um, 100,000 or 100 million uh, elements to sort, uh, the quick sort is taking, I mean, it's getting close to 10 seconds, it's taking about 8.9 seconds. And then by the time we get to a billion uh, elements, the quick sort really starts to slow down and it's taking minutes. Uh, but uh, often a quick sort will be all that you need, really. Okay, well, uh, there's, uh, there's plenty of other comparison sorts. There's uh, shell sorts, um, merge sort. It's 
it's all really interesting stuff. And a lot of the time, these uh, comparison sorts, or even Bible sort itself, will do just fine. It depends on the uh, type of data that you're sorting. And the best sorting algorithm for your data will always be the one that exploits any patterns in the data to sort faster. I think that's about all that I wanted to say. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope that was an interesting adventure through the marvelous world of sorting algorithms. Uh, why is Radix sort so fast? Um, it doesn't use greater than and less than. It's not a comparison sort. It uses digits. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's probably got something to do with it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a good one. Adios.